Greetings, nerdlings, and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Herocraft, Queen as Shara Edition. Before I get started, I just want to say sorry that this didn't go up on Wednesday, but to be honest, I've been sick lately, and yesterday is a bit of a blur to me. I don't even know how I didn't notice that it was Wednesday. The Well of Eternity had always been the central part of the Night Elves' life and culture, but the obsessive Highborn spurred on by Azshara began to delve into the magics of the Well more deeply, even too deeply. One day the Queen was met by her most trusted advisor, Councillor Xavius, who approached her with the idea of using the power of the Well of Eternity to cleanse the world and make it perfect in her eyes. Their meddling with immense magic, however, drew the eye of an interested observer, Sargeras. Seeking to unleash his burning legion upon Azeroth, the Dark Titan and Trans Xavius, pulling the Counselor under his power, followed quickly by most of the Highborn and eventually as Shara herself. Xavius helped the Queen communicate with Sargeras, whom she told of her desire to cleanse the world of the lesser races. Sargeras tricked the Queen into making a portal from which was launched the first invasion of Azeroth by the Burning Legion, an event which is now known as the War of the Ancients. Eventually a resistance was formed, but the Shara paid no attention to their efforts. Sargeras dispatched three of his most dangerous minions to do his bidding. Hakkar the Houndmaster, Manoroth the Destructor and finally Archimon the Defiler. All three commanded and watched over the Legion and would have prevailed had it not been for the efforts of the three Night Elves. Malfurion Stormrage, the Druid, Ilden Stormrage, the Sorcerer and Twin Brother to Malfurion and Thran the Whisperwind, the Priestess as well as three heroes from far into the future, a dragon mage in elf form, a skilled human wizard, and a seasoned orc warrior. When the portal to the other realm was almost open, the combined force of the night elves and their allies from the future charged in to destroy it. Irritated by the lack of order, as Jara approached Manorot and demanded an explanation, Enraged by both his own failure and the questions asked by the Queen, he nearly attacked Azshara, but quickly realised the folly of such an attempt when he realised that Azshara kept inside her a power to which only Sargeras, Kiljaden or Archimond would prove superior. Azshara forgave him of his minor transgression and urged him on to allow Sargeras entrance to Kalimdor. Their efforts came too late, however, and the portal was destroyed. The Sundering was upon Kalimdor as well. Realising that Sargeras would not be coming, Ashara decided not to tell her handmaidens and most loyal followers they had failed. When the black waters of the Well of Eternity poured into the palace, she created a magical shield that would protect her and the remaining Highborn from drowning. It was at that time that a voice echoed in her head, whispering plans for an escape. There is a way. You will become more than you ever were. We can help you. You will be more than you have ever been. And when the time comes for what we grant you, you will serve us well. Her spell collapsed, but as the well filled her lungs, she did not drown. She instead expanded with hate and rage, becoming a horrific yet beautiful monstrosity reflecting the wickedness and malice that had always hidden within her core. Queen Azshara, her handmaidens and many highborn sunk into the sea. The old gods chose Azshara as another useful tool and transformed her, her highborn and her handmaidens into Naga. The mighty Queen Azshara still lives and rules the Naga. Once she awoke at the bottom of the sea, she ordered a palace built to rival her home in Azshara. After the sundering of the world, however, and for thousands of years since, Queen Azshara lives still in the vast city of Nazjatar at the bottom of a deep ocean trench. She has embraced the power of the Naga, 
grown in size and possesses many tentacles, bedecked in jewels and items of power. She plots her revenge on the treacherous night elves, biding her time until the growing might of the Naga can be brought to bear. Living under the sea, she has become queen of the Naga. In her new form, Ashara stands over 20 feet in height and moves her scale-covered body and five slithering octopus-like tentacles. Four arms now extend from the torso, with two hands holding javelins of dark polished wood and gold leaf tips. Like her sea witches, Ashara's head is crowned by writhing serpents. Despite her monstrosity, her face still possesses the same elven beauty she always had. When Ashara finally decided to make the Naga's existence known, she sent Lady Vash to establish contact with the surface dwellers. She yet seeks revenge against the Night Elves who defeated her, slowly readying her Naga subjects in Najjatar to show their might to all of Azeroth. The world grows wary of what the changed Ashara may attempt in the coming future. It remains to be seen if Queen Ashara might still be found among the Naga. The Warcraft Encyclopedia leaves Ashara's fate unknown, referencing the fact that some think she might not have survived, and the Naga merely worship her memory. Dark Factions confirms that she is alive, mutated into a terrible demigod. The progress text of Pusillan and the elder Ash Torden cites that at least some night elves believe that she is in fact dead. The queen has long since passed. However, Vija claims that Ashara imprisoned Leverot a mere 500 years ago, indicating the night elves might be misinformed. Personality and Powers Prior to her corruption, Ashara was extremely charismatic. Her physical and mental appeal were such that virtually no one noticed her more negative qualities. The vast majority of her servitors were willing to go to any means to elevate themselves in her eyes, even at the cost of their own lives. When Sargaris was contacted, as Jara was elated, thinking she had finally found a mate worthy of her. As Shara is known to have used sorcery to increase her appeal, as proved when Illidan detected her spell shortly after receiving his new eyes. Xavius, who considered himself above her charms, was in fact completely enamoured, as Shara was certainly powerful enough to do so. Manorot discovered to his chagrin that Ashara was far more powerful than him and that only Archimonde, Kil'jaeden and Sargaris could have matched her. Once again, I'm sorry that this didn't go up on the usual day. Friday's vid will go up on Friday. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember, play the game and game to play.